Heritage went and did something pretty cool. Welcome back to The Mix. I'm ABD. Today, we have a Heritage guitar. Ooh, it got dark. But it is not the usual American-made Heritage. It actually says in the box, the world's finest American-made musical instruments. And it says up here, made in America. But this guitar, as far as I know, was not made in America. It was made, I think, in China or Indonesia. We'll find out in a moment. We have a box. We have a knife. Then we can open it up. Heritage has been around for about 40 years. If you're not familiar with them, there's a little bit of a story. The founders of Heritage were actually all employees of Gibson in Michigan. And when Gibson decided that they were moving from Michigan to Nashville, some of the employees wanted to stay in Michigan, and so they started their own company, and they actually bought some of the equipment that Gibson was no longer using and the building that Gibson used to occupy. And to this day, they make guitars in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Heritage Guitars, they make guitars that are very similar to like a Les Paul or a 335. Usually, they are handmade in America premium guitars. They run about $3,000, $4,000. Bubble wrap, be gone. But now, in the year 2024, they have launched an affordable line called the Ascent series. They have a number of different colors, which will run by the screen now. Ooh, pretty. And here we have a copper H150 Ascent which their H150 is their Les Paul type, single cut type guitar. And inside the box was a smaller box. This guitar also came from Manny's.com, which is a little interesting. Manny's was a musical instrument shop in New York. And now they have an online store where they sell a few different things, one of which is Heritage, the Ascent series, as well as Harmony, some Harmony guitars, and a little more backstory on Heritage Guitars. In about 2016, they were purchased, about half of the company was purchased by BandLab Technologies, which is a company based in Singapore. BandLab is a DAW, an online kind of social DAW, and, and it was a software that was created by a company called Sonar, which was purchased by Gibson and owned for a few years until Gibson abandoned Sonar, and that's when BandLab Technologies purchased them along with Heritage. And BandLab Technologies also owns Guitar.com, MusicTech.com, and Sway Lee, the music distributor. But this guitar came from BandLab and Manny's and through Heritage. So thank you to all the above for sending out the guitar. Again, it's a Heritage Ascent H150 in copper. So that's enough talking. We can finally get a look at the guitar and hear what it sounds like. So we have good stuff with the packaging inside. We have a nice cloth around the guitar. It is very protected with cardboard on every side. The guitar, I should mention, is only $238. And so even cheaper than most Epiphones. And it does have a Heritage headstock and it says Heritage. We'll get into what makes it more affordable in just a moment. So it is not light and that's good. For this type of guitar, a single cut type, Les Paul type, you don't want like a seven pound thing, it feels nice, maybe eight point something pounds. And here you have a little, whoop, it was very loud. Why is that so loud? In here, ow, you have an Allen key, very important for adjusting the truss rod. Put that there. So now, cardboard, be gone. Now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. Your first look. A Heritage Ascent H150 in copper. Look at that. They even have the protection over the strings that we can take off. Parchment paper, make some cookies later, whoop, whoop, just like a very long strip of cookies and you can just snort it. That's what you do with cookies, right? You snort them. Here we have a protection 
over the switch tip. Up here, we have a little booklet piece of paper. On the front, it says, Our Legacy, Your Journey, Heritage Guitars on the Back, The Ascent Collection, Guaranteed Quality, Crafted with Care, Embark on a Musical Adventure with The Ascent Collection, Designed to Elevate Your Skills and Ignite Your Passion, This Guitar Amplifies Every Moment of Your Journey. From Hometown Gigs to Global Stages, This Guitar is Your Constant Companion. Inspected and approved by a Jimmy, Jimmy me. Can't read that, but that's cool. That's nice. Appreciate that. We appreciate that. You may have noticed it is a bolt-on neck. It is a Akume body on the front. Basswood, a curved basswood top, and um, you have chrome hardware everywhere else. Not nickel. Whoop. We'll take the protection off. These pickups, ooh, and the fretboard is Laurel. It is a 12-inch radius. You do have binding on the guitar that looks very nice and clean. Looking at it closely, the neck, which is Laurel, is a nice piece of Laurel. It looks nice and clean, not ugly. The finish is very clean and even. The neck, again, is bolt-on. There's maybe a little bit of a, I don't know if that's a crack, or an imperfection in the finish. The neck is maple. So a kume body, maple, bolt-on neck, laurel fretboard, and basswood top. You have a heritage-shaped pickguard, black, white, black, and again, chrome hardware tailpiece and bridge. You do not have push-pull, but you have black speed knob type things. You have a three-way switch, and obviously you do not have Fret nips, you have kind of medium sized frets. And there is that headstock that we talked about before. And you have a volute on the back and non locking tuners, which are probably very cheap, but we'll find out. I do not know what type of magnets they have in the pickups, if they are El Nico 2 or 5 or ceramic. It does not say on the website, but I will reach out to them. Right now, I can tell you the action is a little high. Hopefully, that's not a bad indication of the fret work because we can lower the action no problem. The setup looks like it was maybe set up, but we'll find out how that is in a moment. Besides that, you have pretty simple strap buttons and you have a kind of oval shaped control plate back here and a pretty standard one down there. You do also have that plastic protection plate for the metal plate so it doesn't go directly onto the body. I don't know how much of a difference that really makes, but you see it on a lot of guitars today. Like I said, the finish overall is very nice, except for right here, there's a kind of crack or something in the, it goes from the binding and onto the body as well. I don't know if it's in the paint or in the actual body, but the piece seems like it's connected. And on the back here, it says designed in the USA, crafted in China. So they are made in China instruments, but quality wise, very, very nice. How do the frets feel, that's very important. Oh, they feel really nice, actually. Pretty smooth, feeling frets. Like I said, the action is very high, so hopefully I can lower that without getting buzz. We'll find out. It is not in tune. Let me see how high the action is, real quick. Why is it so high? We have a four millimeter action on this. So I'm gonna lower that immediately, because that's insane. On the E, on the low E, we have, <laughs> on the low E, we have almost five millimeters of action. <laughs> and on the high E, we have a little less, about four. That's not good. I really hope this fretboard is level and they didn't just jack up the strings to avoid fret buzz. Let's find out. Let's find out, everybody. Ha cha cha cha. All right, we're back with a screwdriver to lower the action. And that's as easy as tightening these screws on the bridge. And then hopefully we don't all of a sudden get a ton of buzz. But yeah, four millimeters is, is insane. Usually you would want about two to three. Some people want even lower if uh, they're really stingy about it. But you have to have a really level fretboard for that. What, so I'm going to guess that it was not set up 
correctly. What do we have now? Wow, it was really high, folks. I hope this is not an indication of where we are headed with this guitar, because overall it looks really pretty. This bridge needs to come down. These pickups need to come down. Who set this up? A lot of great guitars coming out of China, but who set this up? What's up with that? So, this was sent out to me. They definitely didn't take a look at it before sending it because they would have probably fixed that. What do we have now? <laughs> now the moment of truth. Do we have a bunch of buzz? We have to lower this pickup as well. I think that should do it. So if you got this guitar thinking it's an affordable guitar and you don't know how to set up a guitar or you get it maybe for a younger person, you're going to have a bad time. Four millimeters is not good at all for action. It's like twice as high as it should be. Pretty much unplayable. So if you don't know how to set up a guitar, maybe stay away from the ascent, which is an unfortunate thing for me to say. That's how the cookie crumbles. All right, let's plug it in and tune it up and hear how it sounds. All right. Pig hog cables, silent series, no noise until you plug it in. Boop. All right, tuner. Let's tune it up. They are not remotely even close to being in tune. No buzz yet. So I think whoever set this up just did not do it all the way properly, they had no idea what they were doing. But it looks like it was not done to avoid fret buzz or a sloppy fret job, which is usually why you'll find really high action. It was only done, I think, because they didn't know what they were doing when they were setting up the guitar. Okay, we're in tune and that sounds really good. A kume body, bass wood top, but really nice even tone. So we have a, the action pretty low. That does have a kind of unique kind of tone. The bolt-on neck makes a big difference, and the bass wood top makes a little bit of a difference. I feel like it's a little more resonant than a maple top. Maple is very hard. I feel like the bass wood gives it a different tone acoustically. But that bolt-on neck is really what makes the biggest difference when it comes to tone. It's not very Les Paul-like. It makes it a little more bright and snappy, poppy. Oop. So there we go. We do have some dead frets when we lowered the action. Maybe we need to adjust the truss rod. Oh, we do. There's too much relief in that neck. So let's go ahead and adjust that truss rod as well. So for quality, it gets some pretty good marks. The screws on the truss rod have been completely ruined by whoever installed it. Also, it's installed too far to the left, which is a little bit annoying. But will I even be able to get them off? Because I have to adjust the neck, the truss rod. I definitely have to adjust it. And if I can't get this cover off, then we can't adjust it. So give me a moment. It would be very unfortunate if I couldn't get any of these screws out. Yeah, I have never seen that before. Those screws are completely stripped. And um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them out, which is upsetting. That's very upsetting. That truss rod 100% needs to be adjusted, and I cannot seem to get these screws off. Okay, maybe. Maybe I got this, folks. So if you didn't notice, the Heritage headstock shape is pretty cool. It's not terrible. I kind of like it. The truss rod cover is very simple, not quite as elegant as Gibson, but it is still nice. When the screws are not stripped and it is installed in the center, it's better. It's better for everyone. Maybe I will drill a new hole and move it over and just leave the two bottom screws 
uninstalled, you know, just to help my OCD feel better about how it's installed. That stinks, folks. It's really upsetting. It's really upsetting. One more screw. Do you think we can do it? I think we could probably do it. All right, we raised the action. We adjusted the truss rod, even though that was a pain in the ass because the screw is stripped. Which is very upsetting. But that's okay, we were able to get the bottom two off, so we were able to adjust it. But I don't know if that screw is ever coming out. All right, what does it sound like? Clean on the neck. <laughs> Pretty high powered pickups. They sound like they might be on Nico 5. The middle position. So definitely still needs a little bit of a setup, but it sounds pretty good. What about if we add some doit? output, very bassy type pickups. I don't love them that much, but it's a $240 guitar. So you really can't go wrong. Let's try a little more gain and then we'll wrap it up. So, it's not really staying in tune that well, so you would probably want to change these tuners, you would probably want to change the pickups, but they're not too bad. The setup was bad. It was very, very bad, not set up at all. The quality is pretty good. The frets are pretty even. I think we could raise the action a little more. Now that I'm holding the guitar, it's a little lighter than I thought it might be, but I kind of like that. Uh, we do have a belly cut on the back as well that I didn't mention. So overall, pretty good. I'm not really complaining for the money. The guitar is uh, very beautiful. It plays pretty well, and uh, it still needs more of a setup. It needs to be intonated, and uh, probably a little more action. But what did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you to Manny's and BandLab and Heritage for sending it out, and look forward to part two, because we will be doing a part two on this guitar. So until next time, play guitar and be awesome. Thank you for watching. Heritage Ascent. Thank you for watching. Oops. Not yet, brother. Not yet. Come here, you son of a bitch. You rat bastard son of a bitch.